Okay, let's begin the session. Hi everyone, I'm Kylie from AECC Global. I'm one of the um, education counsellor that will be hosting the um, webinar for today. So welcome everyone, welcome all the attendees to attend our second episode of Study This or That. Okay, where um, for this session, we will be having a series of talks um, hosted by ACC Global, which we collaborated with six universities from the UK to talk about courses, subjects, so that students can know more about the universities and also the courses um, that doesn't require you to be good in math. So over here, you will see our session is bye-bye math. So if let's say you're not good in math, probably um, you can explore other courses. Okay, um, so um, today we will be having um, quite a number of participants coming from different countries because we will be um, sharing this session with um, attendees from Malaysia, Indonesia and also Singapore. All right. Um, so um, before we start the session, um, I would like to uh, share with you that ACC Global is a university's placement agency that specializes in overseas education. So um, do follow us at our social media channels, visit our website, um, follow our Instagram, YouTube, and also follow our Facebook to get more information. And also uh, from time to time, we will have a session like this to share information with um, all the students and um, we can interact with students about um, session like this. Okay, so over here today, we have our first spe speaker, Ellen, all right. Hello. Ellen is from the Monfort Universities, and on the other hand, we have Barry. Yeah, so Hello, Barry. Everybody. Yeah, Barry is from Birmingham City University. So probably Ellen, you could introduce yourself to everyone. Hi, um, this is Ellen. I'm from Malaysia. Uh, I'm based in Kuala Lumpur. I'm representing the Monfort University for Malaysia and Brunei. So today, I'm gonna share the session with you regarding the visual effects and also um game art. How about Barry? Would you would you be able to introduce yourself to the audience today? Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Barry Batson. I'm the program director for the MA Fashion Management and the MA Luxury Brand Management here at uh, Birmingham City University. Yep, that's good to know. Um, so the next part we will be um, uh, I will be asking both our speakers today uh, on some common question that students usually um would like to know about. Okay, so if let's say you have other question that you want to ask, or is there anything you would like to clarify, you can put in your question in at the Q and A box. So you will see a Q and A um link uh tab at the bottom so you can click on it and then post any question that you would like to uh, ask then we will come to your question after uh, towards the end of the session so that we can answer to your question so um, at the moment we will start with the question that we've prepared for Ellen and Barry okay so first of all Ellen so visual could you could you tell us more about visual effects and also game arts um uh, because for this these two courses, there is something in common, but it's also there is some a big difference in the outcome for, for these two courses. So probably you can share with us um, what, is, what is visual arts and also what is game, eh, sorry, what is visual effect and what is game arts? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Kylie. Yeah, a lot of students actually confused between these two because um, especially when students look into visual effects, game art, um, very fancy, something new, something not mentioned during high school because during secondary, the women get talk about maybe just graphic design and some of the graphic um, arts and something to do with drawing. Visual effects and game arts, I think the biggest difference is the industry that you're going to do. So there are some commonalities, mainly in terms of the software that you're going to use while learning. However, the emphasis of visual effects is about producing content for film and television, not games. Um, in terms of the commonalities, game industry, they increasingly produce content with cinematic narratives. For example, before you actually purchase a game of PS4, PS3, PS5, right? Then you will see, before you actually play the game, that advertisement or that uh, cinematic uh, introduction, you will see that very much about visual effects. But in fact, when you play the game, it's the game art part where you are more into the game um, wheel, the angle, everything is quite different. While the visual effect is more on the film and movie side of that storyline. Um, we both use the packages such as Maya, Unreal, and Nuke to produce the 3D content. These are names of the softwares. Uh, the content, the characters, and the effects that are produced based on this. 
but to the greater extent, visual effects use compositing packages such as Nuke to blend video and 3D assets. I would also like to mention the student, when you want to do game art, we do have another program which is totally different. That I need more mathematics, okay? That is computer games programming. That's more the programming part. While game art, you're more like the, the art side of this game, not really on programming. So make sure you select the right program, yeah. Thank you, Evan. Um, Barry, uh, for BCU, uh, we know that BCU have been um, very long, have, have really long and excellent history about art, fashion, design related courses. Um, could you share with us, I also introduce um, to the audience about BCU School of Fashion and Textiles? Yeah, so the School of uh, Fashion and Textiles actually is located uh, very close to the city center uh, of Birmingham actually next to the very famous Bullring Center. Uh, so it's in a, a, a great location. Um, Birmingham actually is one of, is arguably the, the UK's second largest city. Um, pretty well similar in size, if not a little bit larger than Manchester. Mm -hmm. um, has a very good reputation with the students. They. They seem to, to like living in the West Midlands. Uh, the, there's a lot of places just outside of Manchester, uh, like Stratford, um, really interesting places to visit. If you're not familiar with Stratford, that's the birthplace of uh, Shakespeare. So the, the school actually has its origins in the sort of early industrial um, developments of the UK and from that evolved the school, our particular school of, of art and design. Within our school we um, deliver a number of programs actually that cover fashion design and mm -hmm. uh, textile design. The two subjects that I tend to look after is the business side of fashion actually. One is the MA Fashion Management. So this is ideal for those students that want to go into the fashion industry and not necessarily as a fashion designer, but actually want to be the people that make the decisions. So we tend to focus on a combination of modules. And these modules could be things like leadership, uh, management, and combine that with some of the, the knowledge that is required to actually make managerial decisions, like understanding the fashion supply chain. This is, this is really um, crucial if you really want to understand the fashion industry. Um, and most people like um, that become say fashion buyers or in logistics or sourcing, actually have an involvement in that very long chain, which actually stretches right back, maybe to agriculture like cotton growing, to, um, to actually animal husbandry, which is the raising of sheep and, and goats. And these, are, these actually are the fibers for the textile industry. And then we work our way along to sort of fibers, to yarns, to fabric manufacturing and then apparel manufacturing. And you find that actually with the fashion industry, it's fairly unique because actually somebody right at the very end of that supply chain, which is in uh, retail, actually can have an involvement at any part of that supply chain. So it's really important to, to understand how it's all in, interconnected. Uh, so we introduce students to that. Uh, plus, we, we sort of try and um, s s locate it in, in areas that possibly might attract students. Like, for instance, we give them an overview of what fashion buying involves uh, so that uh, they gain an understanding of, of how buyers actually uh, equip themselves with trends and we take students, uh, and we did, I have to say we did, prior to the COVID 
um, outbreak to places like um, Paris, to uh, Premier Vision, which is the world's largest uh, fashion fair. And then we would take them to places like Pitifilati in Florence. Um, we also tend to combine the fashion students, the fashion management students with our luxury brand management students. So as part of that trip, we actually took them to Rome as well. So they could immense, immerse themselves in the sort of the center of, of Italy's um, luxury industry uh, and get a real good insight to, um, you know, what, what makes Italy tick. Um, so it's, we hope to resume them, them again, uh, particularly once this pandemic is, is completely disappeared. Uh, so we think we give the students a pretty well-rounded sort of uh, education and we try and build their analytical knowledge up. This means being able to analyze markets, mm -hmm. find out which ones have the most potential, which, uh, what new developments are taking place in those markets for instance, maybe the rise of uh, artificial intelligence, the rise of social media and its influence on consumers. So uh, we, we consider that we put them in a really good position to really understand what's happening in the fashion and the luxury industries. And um, so that they can actually go back to their own countries and then be the future leaders and drivers within those two industries. And, and one thing I should mention is that, particularly with the luxury industry, it is moved towards more of a lifestyle type of approach for the consumer. So it's become more encompassing. So those luxury brands, rather than just at one time maybe concentrating on luxury bags, have moved into other areas like luxury tourism, luxury travel. This can, can involve trains and aeroplanes. And it's all about developing unique experiences now for the consumer. Yep, thank you so much, Barry. Yeah, Good. thanks for the explanation. Um, Alan, probably you can share with us, uh, why would you recommend um, this two course to um, students or how does it relate to mathematics and um, is there anything that students need to take note? Uh, well, I think the major part is that um, that would be, I wouldn't say that would be zero math, there would be a little mm. bit, like tiny little bit of math, especially when it comes into game art because when a student selecting like one of these programs, they are thinking about art one thing definitely i'm not expecting you to come up with a brilliant portfolio the day that you enter into the program that's impossible but along the way that you are doing a program you learn to do the software and when it comes to the game art there are parts that you need to visualize and make it um make it realistic so when you come into the 3d modeling you definitely need to do a little bit of calculation whether that <laughs> how that of the image is going to appear to 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 real life so um when you want to calculate like the, the, the feeling that things are going to swing there, how, how much the angle is going to be. So this is a little bit of math. I wouldn't say there'll be zero math, but I definitely not expecting you to do like additional mathematics scoring A's when you are doing this. I don't really need that. So um, that's just a little bit of calculation that would be, um, if they will be good to, to know. But um, when student deciding on the program itself, I'd say they must mention about their interests, if they are really, really into um, the industry, say, if they like filmmaking. Um, mm -hmm. The first way for students to understand is that when they watch a movie or they simple things like, say, Avengers, um, Transformers, maybe Love the Ring or maybe Jurassic World, when they are watching all this, these are more like visual effects. But mm -hmm. when they're playing games, not just um, computer games, but anything to do with like, their Xbox and also PlayStation. So that kind of area, if they really want to contribute into that industry, I think that is the biggest motivation to inspire. If they want to know a little bit more and contribute into the industry, that is, that is a 
major part. I don't think they will mind about that little bit of math. Yeah, I don't need like you score an, an A or B in these programs. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's great to know, Ellen. Uh, Barry, I would like to ask because I think fashion design and fashion um, branding and management is a little bit um, overlap in the sense that if it involves fashion, um, just that sometimes we have students coming us to us that I, I would like to involve in fashion, but I'm not good in designing itself. So could, probably you could explain what is the difference um, that students will be actually studying during their fashion design and also what is the difference between if they do fashion branding, management, the, the majors that will be doing, what are the, the, the major differences? Yeah, um, for instance, with fashion design, mm -hmm. uh, most students actually, whilst they're at university, uh, they're allowed to explore their creative side. In, in that they can design anything. Uh, and, and this is why in many ways, when you see the student catwalks, um, that actually what you're looking at is, is not what you would normally see commercially produced. Um, and, and that really is purely to develop that artistic talent. Now, and, and, and let me be clear with fashion mm -hmm. design in that most fashion designers uh, have a choice in that they can either go and work for themselves, actually m sort of designing and creating their own products, uh, and they, they sell them in their own uh, boutique, mm -hmm. or, um, or they can go and work for the, uh, the premium brands. Um, now, if they work for the premium brands, Technically, they, they are given a, um, a, a, a sort of a long piece of rope, as you could describe it as, to really design exactly what they want. And the reason being is, is that most of the high-end brands, actually, they use fashion design just to showcase their brand. And, and it's actually not necessarily how they make all of their money. So whether it's commercial or not is not that important for the high-end brands. Yep. Now, I have to say that they only represent uh, about 5% of the market. Yep. So most fashion designers will actually go and join uh, the sort of mainstream retailers. And this is actually where it becomes a little bit more restrictive for mm -hmm. them because they are then told what to design. And they're told what to design predominantly by the fashion buyers. It's the fashion buyers and combined with the merchandisers. Now remember that the merchandisers are the analytical personnel that actually look for patterns in sales. And, and they analyze all the sales at the weekend mm -hmm. and they say, this product range is selling well, uh, so this garment is, is doing quite well. We need to order more of these. And then when it comes to the next season, they work out what the offering is going to be based on sales. Yep. So this then sort of is transferred over to the designers. So they're more or less told exactly what they need to design. So that's if you took a fashion design program. So you might end up being that part of that 95% that are working for the, the middle uh, market, the mainstream market. But the fashion management students possibly could go into the roles where they are actually instructing or informing the fashion designers. Actually, what are the current trends yeah, that are emerging in certain regions of the world, you know, so because there's always differences, maybe from the, the Far East to Europe to America, and you need to be sort of aware of what those sort of differences are and the global trends that are taking place. And you're collecting information, market information on your consumers on um, patterns within retailing, and you're informing your particular team about which direction 
on what designs we should actually be releasing to fulfill the consumer's needs and wants. And that's really where fashion management students come in. They are students that are equipped with a high degree of marketing skills combined with uh, management skills to either manage uh, processes or personnel to achieve their objectives and um, to take the business and the brand in certain directions. So it's a very different um, comparison, actually, if you're comparing fashion management students with fashion design students. You can think of it like this, that the fashion management students are the ones that are equipped with all the business mentality to actually be able to make a success of the business. Mm -hmm. The fashion design um, people are the ones that have had their uh, artistic um, talent nurtured to be able to create what the consumer wants to purchase. Yep, that, that's really great, Mary. That, that will be able to explain to the audience what is the difference between designing and then fashion and then the um, overall, it will still be a business behind the luxury brand. Yeah, so hmm. that is the... Yeah, yeah that I mean, be... uh, just on that, I mean, I do know some fashion designers that have been quite successful as fashion designers, but to be successful as a fashion designer, you need more than just design mm -hmm. talent. You need to be very proactive, promoting yep. yourself, promoting your brand. Yep. Um, and that tends to be those personnel, those mm -hmm. fashion designers that also have that business acumen to be able to take their uh, brand or business in a particular direction. Yeah, that's but but do enough. remember yeah. that, that those little boutique sort yeah. of fashion designers, they're very small in the, mm -hmm. the schemes of the, the global fashion uh, industry. Yeah. Um, for Ellen, may I know um, for these two courses, uh, visual mm -hmm. effects and game arts, what would be the education pathway would students be needing to take, um, go through a bachelor degree or master's or what are the education pathway in, if they want to go into the industry, like for example, involving themselves into film productions um, or wants to come up with their own game arts, game designs and all those. The career pathway, you mean, right? Uh, sorry, e education pathway, like education degree, pathway. yeah, yeah. Um, that is, well, not only for these two programs, we need to have a relevant degree. Mm -hmm. And what actually speaks loudest is the portfolio, because, um, for example, uh, visual art, um, sorry, visual effects is part video editing plus mm -hmm. art and design and a little bit of calculation on that, um, addition on the yeah, video editing part. Mm -hmm. So the skills required to gain entry is actually um, equivalent to have a good portfolio and also a showreel. So being able to communicate effectively to your client, that would be important because you're going to work um, as part of the production team and you need to follow the visual effects pipeline and you need to have the essential knowledge of mm -hmm. the standard software so um, normally the communication part a long way that you are studying getting a degree you do mm -hmm. project you have your group communicate together working on assignments that actually build you normally I would say a lot of students they taught they will picture themselves sitting in front of the monitor and keep on working day and night you need to talk you need to have that kind of skill set um, it's yeah. it's it's essential mm -hmm. because when you're unable to explain or you're unable to grab the idea of what client actually want or your boss actually wanted to, to, to give that kind of effect, that would be um, a bad thing for you. Because even though your, your idea is brilliant, but you're unable to express it and no one is going to wait until you produce that to look at the end result if the project is not assigned to you, right? So this would be quite important. Other than that, um, for game art, it's the same thing. Game art, normally you would be assigned to, during internship period, we strongly encourage students to do work placement and internship. During that time, you gain um, opportunity to work with a team. And from there, you know how the industry works. And 
you will be able to play your part in doing that assignment and you know uh, what actually um, the step-by-step -step guide through the project and you work with the team and if you have a good work attitude and your project shows and your portfolio is actually nice, people would definitely recommend you to the company, to the position on taking part of the particular project. So it comes to it comes to your work, part of the, your, part, the portfolio, definitely. And also the recommendation of people who work with you, that's quite important. So from there, you start off subject to how well that you progress to. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't really need a master degree yep. for you to get entry unless yep. you have gained um, certain experience in a company and an organization and you wanted to do more, then it really mm -hmm. subject to what kind of position you're gonna climb later. Yeah. yeah. May, may I know how long is the degree takes? Uh, the degree is going to be three years. Yep. Yep. Okay. If you yeah. are from um, Malaysia or Singapore or some student coming from other colleges, they want to transfer over. If you have got a diploma or advanced diploma, do feel free to submit your um, current portfolio and also academic transcript for assessment because we'll, we'll be able to assess if, let's say, it's relevant studies, you'll be exempted for the first year. Yeah. Yep, that's great to know. Um, for Barry, may I know is this um, fashion branding um, and management course available at undergraduate level? Um, and also if let's say students who want to enter into the MA, um, would students need to have relevant background? For example, they, do they need to come from fashion or do they need to come from business uh, background or it is open to any students who wants to change the career and intend to um, move to this industry? Okay, uh, well, there's a number of questions. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll start with the first one. So yeah. um, we don't have a, an undergraduate mm. fashion management mm -hmm. program. Uh, now, we do have um, some undergraduate programs that cover branding. So branding and communications. Um, so, of course, that, that would sort of prepare somebody to actually... Um, to continue and undertake the master's programs. Um, I have had, I have a student on the luxury brand management program that did the BA fashion communications mm -hmm. uh, program. So what I normally find is that if a student that does something like fashion communications at undergraduate level, they look for something slightly different at master's level. Uh, uh, and that, that gives them a sort of, a, or it shows that they have uh, probably a little bit more of a rounded sort of background, particularly when they go to look for a position and go into the, uh, the workplace. Now, in terms of entry requirements, yep. um, we don't necessarily re require anybody to have a business background or a fashion background. Mm -hmm. um, previously, I've had students that have studied law, um, actually gone on, uh, studied um, uh, journalism. To, and when I've asked them, they, they were predominantly being trained to be presenters on TV. So um, very different to fashion management. But what I find is that many students actually undertake undergraduate courses and then you know, they, they realize that maybe their passion is more fashion mm -hmm. and therefore they see the master's program as their entry into the fashion industry. So we welcome students from a, from a, a very broad background. Uh, and it, it, I think this adds to the sort of student experience because they're, they're not necessarily all coming from exactly the same sort of field. And uh, but that's not a concern because we try and bridge the gap, the gap. Mm -hmm. And even for those students that actually have a fashion background, um, our concentration is predominantly on the business side. And particularly at, at um, sort of how to assess markets and analyze the potential in mm -hmm. certain regions of the world and what that can offer for whether you're based here in Europe or whether you're based in the Far East and actually want to enter maybe the European markets. Mm -hmm. So 
this is um, this is what we tend to to concentrate on. Um, so as long as you have a completed an undergraduate program, then you're welcome to apply for either the luxury brand management or the fashion management program. Yep, that's great to know. Um, everyone can take notes. So if let's say you want to change your career goals into fashion industry, you can also have the chance. Um, but for Alan, uh, may I know what is the advantage for students to study at DMU for both courses? Like, would there be any uh, facilities that students will be uh, able to um, have access to? Or would there be any other like uh, cameras? Or would there be any software that students will be able to access to? Yeah, we have a very complete studio with um, mm. all the software that students need. And for information, students can actually access to, well, repeat to the pre-pandemic situation, our libraries and students actually accessible 24-7. Um, for mm -hmm. um, certain timing, they actually open, um, students need to book it because it can be uh, quite uh, popular at times, especially people working on assignments. But usually it's quite sufficient for students to use that we do have um, Unreal accredited team for the game art students and we also have um, industrial standard software for visual effects students so um, students would have support from the tutors getting through it and that would be uh, quite sufficient for, for that kind of uh, study support. Um, when students look into, I'd say maybe when students look into the, the international student mainly, when they look into progressing through um, from the background, they normally worried about if the class size or if they would be able to get um, individual support. We do have uh, in, we do have tutor and also the student can book a consultation hour. So um, especially Asian student, they are rather shy. They normally don't ask that question. So just feel free if you don't feel like asking through um, the lecture session. Just book a session, make an appointment. Um, we'll be able to assist you. Yeah, so facility-wise and studio, it's all there. It's The resources are all there. Just subject to uh, whether do you book a session and use it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's great to know that students, in, as international students, you don't have to be shy and you will have access to all yeah. the facilities on campus. Yeah, so mm -hmm. as long as you have questions, just have to ask the tutors and anyone. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, um, Barry, probably you can share with us um, because as you mentioned, students will be able to go for study tours pre-COVID time. Um, is there any other hands-on experience that students will gain while, while yeah. studying the program? Yep. Yeah, certainly. I mean, one of the um, areas that uh, we like to concentrate on is giving students what we describe as tangible skills. Mm -hmm. These, um, these are um, skills that are sort of instantly recognizable, maybe at an interview. So for instance, what we ask the students to do is rather than produce the old uh, bland, just word reports the, of the past, we ask the students to create visually enriched reports. Now this, this actually reflects sort of industry practice actually in this modern era. So if you have a look at any brand's publications, they are uh, sort of full of uh, photographs and um, graphs and charts mm -hmm. and created in a visually pleasing way. So we, we actually try to, um, to get the students to produce exactly the same when it comes to their assignments. We asked that their assignments are presented similar to that. Now, what we tend to do is actually, um, we tend to run training courses in, in design. So this is, a, this is the industry standard for producing these visually uh, enhanced reports. And also, Illustrator. Now, some students, particularly if they have a fashion design background, will already have skills in Illustrator. Uh, but for those that don't, we do run courses. Our IT uh, people will run these on a weekly basis and also Photoshop as well. So at the end, um, or I should say at the beginning, 
actually the students possibly don't have these type of skills, but after 12 months, they've produced a visually enriched major project that they can take to an interview and actually show the actual potential employer there and then that this is the sort of work that I'm capable of producing. And it, you know, if, if anything, it is, it's actually a discussion point during an interview. So we, we put a lot of emphasis on that. Yep, that's great to know. And, um, and all the software, I've just, I've just got to mention, all the software is provided by the university. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we, um, we actually give out all students access to all of the Microsoft software mm -hmm. and then plus the Adobe um, sort of software as well. Yep, that's great to know. Um, for Alan, uh, may I know, would students need to have a portfolio or would students need to have any um, background in terms of arts um, in order to apply for the um, visual arts or uh, visual effects or game arts um, degree? Would they need to come from like, yeah, like for example, students who did like maybe science during their high schools or their year 12 qualification and then they don't have any ideas in terms of like, um, do they have, do they need to have any arts related um, area? Mm, yeah, we do need students to know that uh, how to draw. Uh, mm. For the portfolio advice, yes, we do have a very clear portfolio guidance, like what I need in especially game art design. Mm. But for um, visual effects, uh, we would need students uh, just to make sure that they know what visual effect is. I don't really need a portfolio. For game, for game art design, yes, for game art, I need a portfolio. And um, I think I saw a question down there. Later on, yep. I will provide that with uh, the link. Because, okay, sure. um, yeah, because we do understand that students are a little worried about what kind of um, drawings that we need. Uh, we have a very clear portfolio advice template. So you need to look into that, fulfill all the criteria and submit electronically would do. Yeah. Yep, that's great to know. Um, Barry, may I know, is there any... Um, brands that BCU actually um, has connection with or has sent students for workshop or intern at? Yeah, actually, we've built up quite a portfolio of mm. people that we work with. Um, for instance, um, we've got um, one company at the moment, um, real pioneering company actually in developing uh, interactive apps for yep. consumers and um, the company is wanting our students actually to sort of be interned within their organization um, to, to help develop the business and the students actually get um, they're trained by the business and um, you know I think that um, the students that join us actually we have a, a placement um, option as well with the programs. So you can sign up for the normal one year program, or you can sign up for the one year program plus placement. Mm -hmm. Now we do help the students actually get a placement within a, a business, um, but we also um, have connections. For instance, we've got, um, um, Abercrombie and Finch coming in next week, actually, okay. and they're, they're coming in to discuss, uh, and actually the person's from the US, and uh, they've, they've worked for Abercrombie and Finch for something like five years, and they're going to come in and do a presentation about, you know, the, the ethos and, and uh, the, the brand um, uh, signature to the students so they, they fully understand what it is to work for these type of brands. So, so yes, there's, there's every opportunity for the students to take an internship whilst part of uh, being part of the master's program at BCU, or if they just want to do the, full, the just the 12 month, we do invite people in that we have connections with to give the students an insight into the actual brands and how they actually conduct themselves 
and, and, and undertake their business activities. Yep, thank you, Barry. Um, my next question to Ellen, this would not be about the um, course, it will be more about the pandemic. Yeah, so right. may I know with this pandemic, for Singapore and Malaysian students, are they still be able to travel to UK for study purpose? Yeah. Uh, yes, um, actually the list will be updated every three weeks or so. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, <laughs> Singapore is on the green list, so there's no issue with Singaporean students coming into the UK as long as they have uh, fulfilled all the visa requirements, they have got, have got the visa approval letter, and also there is a compulsory um, medical report to prove mm -hmm. that you're negative on a coronavirus. That's it. We, for without vaccination, we still need that report. For Malaysian students still on the AMBER list at the moment. So uh, for Malaysian student, um, keep an eye on it. At the moment, you still need to fulfill the requirement as in upon arrival, you still need to um, have the first and second test book. And also, um, the good thing is that you will be able to do self-isolation only. It's not compulsory quarantine. So you can move to our university accommodation, which you have spoke earlier. Um, the self-isolation doesn't mean that you are not allowed to leave your room. It's not as strict as um, the previous lockdown in our Asian standard. We don't lock you in your room. We don't serve three meals a day and restrict you to, to, to not step out from your room. We, 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 don't, we don't lock you that way. You are still feel free to move around to the kitchen, to the student lounge. You can do that, but we don't encourage you to go out and like join a group to do partying. No, you are not allowed to do so. Um, we strongly discourage you to do so, regardless how many friends you, you have there. Um, <laughs> we hope that you use you utilize whatever technology and internet you have um, over there. Yeah. So other than that, make sure that you have um, you have checked through the list because. Uh, Embolis is quite straightforward. It's all there. But when it turns red, things are going to be difficult. Mm. Hopefully, Singapore and Malaysian students, we don't go into the red, please. It's very, very hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very hopefully. Hard. Yeah, prob probably Barry can share with us how is the situation in UK right now? Yeah, actually, very similar. Uh, I think Helen's actually explained it um, very uh, succinctly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the the, I mean, the situation actually is that we more or less are back to, to normal, if I'm honest. I know Boris Johnson did extend the, yeah. uh, the lockdown last night, but let me just explain what that meant, that at the moment we are more or less, we, we're free to go out and, and, and shop and, and, and actually visit restaurants and pubs. Um the way the restaurants and pubs work at the moment is that you uh, you sit down, they, they you, you sit down at a table and they come and to serve you. So it's not like the the old pubs where you would just walk through the door and actually walk up to a bar and, and stand at the bar and and uh, in a little group and be served. Uh, we haven't reached that stage yet. So that stage will come actually in July, my understanding is, is mm -hmm. that Boris actually extended the, uh, the lockdown, that part of the lockdown for another four weeks. But mm -hmm. a part of that was that there seemed to be a little bit of a promise that if we lock down for another four weeks, that when we do eventually completely come out of you know all so you know re the relaxation of all social distancing uh, the wearing of face masks um, that will take place at the end of July um, and all this extended lockdown was is to allow the younger generation time to be all fully vaccinated yep. so my understanding was from yesterday uh, all the 18 plus to 25 was invited for their vaccinations. So this does mean by, by September, the whole country should be vaccinated. And, uh, and the chances are that over 80% would have had their second injection mm -hmm. as well. So, so as a country, we're moving rapidly in the right direction. Um, I, I, you know, I, I think... 
by September, we would have seen the end of in in the UK, the end of of COVID um, and the restrictions that it brought. But we we we're also told that COVID's never going to disappear yes. completely. So we do have to live with it. Um, and there may be little flare ups, but I think generally we're not going to be concerned in the future, in the near future. That is. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, probably um, that's, that's all the questions that have we prepared, uh, pre-prepared by us um, to ask Ellen and Barry. So if let's say attendees, um, you have any question, just, just write in the uh, Q&A box um, so that is it okay with Ellen and Barry that we, we go ahead with any of the students' questions? Yes. Sure. Yeah, okay, okay sure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, probably um, with Barry first, um, on the first question, what are the estimated salary range for brand ambassador? Well, um, that really depends on what you mean by a brand uh, ambassador. I mean, actually, it could mean that you have taken somebody that is, is um, sort of well-known, um, somebody that's well-known is generally described this day and age as a celebrity. Uh, of course, that you know in terms of an individual payment um it might seem a very high payment but in terms of of the brand's um sort of out, outlay it, it's actually only minor um so you know if you're thinking of doing the program to become a brand ambassador that's uh you know it's probably not going to happen you know, yeah. you, you, you know, this is, this is, uh, to be a brand ambassador, you, you need to already have established okay. yourself and, yep. and be able to offer something to the, the brand. Yep. I understand that. Yeah. Um, probably the next question to Ellen, uh, there seems to be have an overlapping between game art, visual effects, and also 3D animation. So, um, this student would like to know how he or she to choose um, the majors and if let's say he or she does choose 3D animation movies and games um, does it mean that it would help in his or her career in the future? Yeah this is a very popular question that a lot mm. of students normally ask that because they know um, 3D animation program already. I'd say the biggest difference is that um, maybe I'll put uh, visual effects. Yes you're right um, all this you learn 3D animation is like a uh, a common subject that definitely will learn up. But if you are a 3D student, yes, you can work in game industry, you can work in visual effects and sometimes even architecture for the purpose of visualization. But um, what did make it different is that the visual effects student can do the same with an added benefit of working as a video editors and producers. Mm -hmm. um, and also because you have um, video production part into your program, you do, um, merge and blend in video and also 3D effects together. For game art, you learn game production a little with the art side and you need to do how to um, handle the lighting, level design, shading, and also you will have an opportunity to work out your own portfolio in the end of the program. You have a personal project to do the industry ready portfolio, receive mentorship from your academic supervisor and with the technical support, you you can choose your specialism in that, which is very much focusing on games. So in that, if you are interested in a game industry, you have an easier start. Well, 3D animators, you need to spend longer time to spend more time in the industry eventually, know more about that. So for students who have not make a decision, but they know they love art, they, they kind of like the animating part, they can always do 3D animation. But if you already decided like which industry you would like to do, that would at least save you a year or two to get into where you want. Yeah, I think that would be more appropriate. But yes, you're right. 3D animation will take part of um, this industry. Yep. Yes. Hmm. Yep, I understand. Yeah. Um, next question it will be for Barry. Um, this student would like to know, um, are there many opportunities for students to attend fashion show throughout the program? I think it might be involving um, fashion brand design, a fashion branding program, or is it just exclusive for fashion design students? No, actually, it, um, there are many students uh, that have an interest in um, 
attending something like London Fashion Week, yep. where there are sort of many of these fashion shows taking place. So we encourage the students to participate in these type of activities because it gives them an insight into how, the, particularly the, the event itself, uh, I mean, as a fashion management student, you may be involved in actually the organization of London Fashion Week or one in another country, your own country. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's, it's important, I think, for the students to, to also be proactive, to seek out events. And we never discourage any students to attend any external events that are taking place because all of them will actually enhance their understanding of the industry. Yep, I understand that. Yeah, so this particular student, feel free to join the events that are organized by PCU or other organizer. Um, next would be also for Barry. I think this students may be asking about, um, is it relevant for students to get any certification in the fashion industry, both in managerial as well as design? Or it can be through experience, like, like I mean, getting to a managerial role in the fashion industry through um, years of experience. Yeah, qualifications. Yeah, um, correct. And this was asked by uh, Mango, Mango yeah, Chan. Correct. Yep. It's a great name, Mango. <laughs> um, look, it's, you know, you can spend a, a whole life in the fashion industry and gain lots of experience, but generally those people that have a lot of experience maybe working in a factory have an experience in a very narrow area in what they actually do on a daily basis but what we're giving you actually is a broader uh, experience and with that at the end comes a qualification now, I always explain to students that what qualifications do is they open doors to you that would otherwise be closed to other people. So by having that qualification, it means that you can apply for positions with confidence saying that, yes, I have a broad range of experience and knowledge of the industry and particularly with the major project, you can take that along and show them what you're capable of doing. And like I say, it, it sort of is a, um, a conversational point. So those conversations then lead on to other things and actually help the interviewer uh, make a decision about yourself in that you understand the industry in more depth than maybe somebody that has a narrow sort of um, field of experience that have gained over a large number of years. Yeah. You're shortcutting that. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's a shortcut for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, one mm -hmm. last question for Barry. Um, this student would like to know, would there be lesser exam for studying um, fashion branding or is it mainly um, assessments or artwork produced by um, when they were doing their qualification? Yeah, so um, mm -hmm. with both programs, there is no examination. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to sit examinations. Um, but they're assessment based. So we write assessments to, to test your sort of analytical skills, your ability to be able to analyze potential for your brand or for your business and be able to convey that in the written form. Um, but like I mentioned previously, we want you to actually show your uh, creative side in producing a visually enriched report that reflects industry standard. Yep, I understand that. Yeah. Um, one last question for Ellen. I think this question is about game. Uh, if let's say the students is doing game design or arts, if let's say um, the students want to transfer to visual art, the visual or graphic design after studying one year or one and a half years of game design, would they be able to do so? 
in that case, I, I would need to mention that because we don't do one and a half year transfer, it's either um, we do block transfer, it's like full mm. one year or two years. In that case, it would be quite difficult because the subject is not similar. Yeah, unless you're telling me that your subject coverage is um, more than that. But if you talk about um, within DMU on the switch program, it is difficult. It really subject to your program leader's approval if they think that, uh, like for example, you're transferring back to graphic design. If they think that your results is okay and the area that you studied would be able to cover that, then should be all right. But if you didn't do well, like most of the subject that's like borderline, it will be quite difficult. You may need to consider redoing your year one. Yeah. So normally I wouldn't um, encourage students to make a very rush decision, deciding which program to proceed with. Do um, let us know should you have anything uh, that you need further clarification because I am happy to arrange the program leader and also some course module information to send to you before you actually sign up to any one of the program. Bear in mind, um, the earlier you notified us to change the program, the better it is because um, not just that you have to worry about the risk of repeating that additional year. Um, mm -hmm. And also there is a timeline for your student visa to stay in the UK. So you can't repeat your undergraduate degree for too many years. So uh, I, I will be able to provide you in details. So if you would like to know more. Yep. So this particular student, feel free to contact us and we will connect you with Alan privately to understand more about two different courses and also the yeah. differences. Okay, so that's the end for our Q&A session. So probably, Alan, would you have any last words or anything that you want to um, let our audience know? Yes, we are located in Leicester. We are one <laughs> hour from London by train. We are not that far and we are quite peaceful um, for the protests. Um, articles, news article you see, like after the, 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 the Prime Minister of the UK, they announced that they're going to extend, people making noise on the street, that's not Leicester. Leicester is quite peaceful, no worries. So you won't be um, alienated when you are there, we are quite friendly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you <laughs> and, and also, I ought to add as well, Leicester is a very famous football team. Yeah. The FA Cup this year. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so you can indulge yourself into becoming a Leicester City supporter, yep. just like me. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. How about Barry? Is there anything you'd like to add on or let um, the audience know? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, if you decide to uh, take the fashion uh, management program or the luxury brand uh, program, I think you won't regret it because both of these programs, um, they're really, really interesting. It's, it's an exciting industry, the fashion industry, and to get a, a real good insight into how it works and the opportunities that are open to you as somebody that will be the future leader is, is really exciting. The luxury brand is moving it rapidly in a certain direction and uh, it's a growing industry. So if you want to be part of the luxury industry, there's every opportunity there for you. All you need is that qualification that opens the door for you. Okay. Yep. So it's a wrap for today's session. So um, we have come to the end for this session. So um, after this, we will be having a next, uh, our next section will be about um, psychology and law. So if you have not signed up about or you would like to know more about psychology or law or friends or family who likes to know more about the um, psychology and law do sign up click on the link at our website um, and also do make sure to follow our facebook instagram youtube all the social media uh, um, we are also on reels um, hopefully in future we'll be in tiktok <laughs> yep okay so that's all for today so um, if you have any questions about um, studying in uk you want us to link you up with universities or maybe speak privately to Aaron, ellen or barry um, feel free to contact us okay um, you can you you can um, contact us through our WhatsApp, our, web, uh, our website and other um, channels. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you, Barry, and thank you, Alan. Right. Thank you very much, um, yep. uh, Kylie. Yep. Yeah. Thank and, you, everyone, for joining today. Yeah. Yeah. And have a nice day, Alan.
Thank you. You too. Stay safe and, and healthy. Yeah. I hope to yeah. see you all in September. Yeah, I hope to see everyone in September in the UK. Thank you for joining yeah. us. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.